Understanding how underlying assets are priced in the spot market is crucial to understanding how derivatives are priced. To understand derivative pricing, it's necessary to establish a linkage between the derivative market and the spot market. That linkage occurs through arbitrage. We've briefly introduced the concept of arbitrage in the previous lesson. We know that, based on the law of one price, two different securities with identical payoffs in the future should have the same price. Otherwise, an arbitrage opportunity exists. Looking deeper, can you think of any two securities that would produce identical payoffs in the future? You may be hard-pressed to think of any. In markets for traditional securities, we don't often encounter two assets that have identical future payoffs, even for very similar companies in the same industry. The picture changes, however, if we introduce derivatives. For most derivatives, the payoffs may not be identical, but they come directly from the value of the underlying at the expiration of the derivative. Although no one can predict with certainty the value of the underlying at expiration, as soon as that value is determined, the value of the derivative at expiration becomes certain. This property of derivatives allows investors to construct hedged portfolios. A hedged portfolio can be constructed by taking a position in the underlying and taking the opposite position in the derivative at the same time. This creates a portfolio with no uncertainty about its value at some future date. To understand the concept of hedged portfolios, let's go through an example. Let's say there's an asset that's traded at $100 at time zero. At this time, a forward contract that expires in exactly one year is priced at $103. So an example of a hedged portfolio is if an investor longs the underlying asset at $100 at time zero and simultaneously enters the short position of the forward at a contract price of $103. Since there is no cash flow involved at the initiation of the forward, the net cash outflow from the investor at time zero is $100. At expiration, the investor is obligated to sell the asset at $103 to close the short position. The investor simply delivers the asset which he owns and collects $103 regardless of the market price of the asset at expiration. The investor earns $3 in a year or a 3% return without taking any risk of the underlying asset other than the counterparty risk. The investor will get a 3% return regardless of the price of the underlying at expiration. Now, let's bring back the asset pricing equation that we've learned earlier. Let's assume that holding the asset Y has negligible costs and benefits. The expected future price is therefore the spot price, compounded by risk-free rate plus risk premium. Let's assume also that the risk-free rate at time zero is 3%. If that's true, this means that the risk premium in this case is zero. Now, we know that for a risk-averse investor, zero risk premium would not hold. So, is there a pricing error of the forward at time zero? Let's say the forward is priced with a 2% risk premium at $105 instead. If that's the case, an arbitrageur can sense the opportunity and borrow $100 at the risk-free rate of 3% to buy the asset. He will simultaneously enter a short position at the contract price of $105. At time zero, the net cash flow from the arbitrageur is exactly zero. At expiration, the arbitrageur simply sells the asset for $105 to fulfill the contract and uses $103 from the proceeds to repay the loan. As you can see, the arbitrageur earns $2 without putting in any cash. Now, we know that such arbitrage opportunities cannot last for long, for when many arbitrageurs realize the opportunity, the buying pressure on asset Y will push its price up, and the increase in shorts will push the forward price down. This continues until the forward price returns of this portfolio are equal to the risk-free rate of 3%, where no arbitrage is possible and the risk premium is zero. The important point to understand from this illustration is that while the risk aversion of investors is relevant to pricing assets, it's not relevant to pricing derivatives. 
As such, derivatives pricing is sometimes called risk-neutral pricing. So, based on the principles of arbitrage and risk-neutral pricing, only one price can exist for the derivative. We call this the no-arbitrage derivative price. The no-arbitrage derivative price has to satisfy this equation. The purchase of the underlying asset at time zero plus the short position and the forward at time zero equal to the present value of the net payoff at time t, discounted by the risk-free rate. This equation can be generalized to a position in the underlying asset plus the opposite position in the derivative is equal to the present value of the net payoff at time t discounted by the risk-free rate. Now, going back to our example, do you realize that the cash flows and risk characteristics of this portfolio is exactly the same as a risk-free bond? In both instances, the investor places $100 at time zero and gets a return of the 3% risk-free rate after one year. In other words, an asset and a derivative on the asset can be combined to produce a position equivalent to a risk-free asset. It follows that the asset and the risk-free asset can be combined to produce the derivative. Alternatively, the derivative and the risk-free asset can be combined to produce the asset. This process of creating an asset or portfolio from another asset, portfolio and or derivative is known as replication. So for this example, we show how a long forward position in an asset can be replicated by borrowing at the risk-free rate to buy the asset. In taking a long forward position, an investor agrees to sell Y one year later. At the initiation of the contract, the investor does not fork out any cash, so his net cash flow is zero. On the other hand, the investor can replicate the long forward position by borrowing $100 at the risk-free rate and using the money to purchase the asset. Similarly, his net cash flow at time zero is zero. At expiration, the market price of the asset is now S1. Under the forward contract, the investor has to buy the asset at $103. He can then sell the asset on the market for S1. So his net cash flow at expiration is S1 minus $103. Under the replicated portfolio, the investor sells the asset at the market price of S1. The investor also has to repay the loan by returning $103. So likewise, his net cash flow at expiration is S1 minus $103. As you can see, the net cash flows for both portfolios are identical. This illustrates how a long forward can be replicated by buying an asset and borrowing at the risk-free rate. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.